Hey YouTube, this is Tamara Rose Blodgett, The Cheating Carnivore. I'm also an expat. Expat is an expatriate, it's a person that lives in one country and then also chooses to live in another one. I don't feel like I'm an expatriate. As a matter of fact, I am a patriot. I am 100% behind the United States Constitution of America. <laughs> that was a lot. I want to talk about meat. Um, this, is a, this is a carnivore uh, content video, but I also have a, a little bit of a spin on that because I am trying to be carnivore successfully in a foreign country. And so I wanted to show you what I'm eating. Now, this just came out of the freezer, guys. So I'm just gonna wipe off the label a little bit so you can see what I'm, I'm doing here. And this is mesquite. And I get this at the Lay Grocery Store. The Lay Grocery Store came into being in the 40s or 50s. There's a, a huge Chinese, German, French, and Spaniard influence in Mazatlan. It's a very mixed city. And uh, a Chinese uh, guy, who was also Mexican, he had the last name Lei, L-E-Y. And so this is the only place where I can get this. It's sort of like a Safeway type of thing, okay? And this is Molida Especial de Reis y de Cerdo, okay? So it's beef and it's pork together. Because I'm in Mexico, they don't, they don't say what the, the blend is. Is it 50-50? Absolutely not. It's probably got about 10% beef and 90% pork, but I love the taste of it. But it is 100% meat, and that's what's most important to me, is it's 100% meat and it has good flavor. Now, because of its combination and pork being less money, it is 46.90 pesos, okay? So let me do the conversion, all right? That's about $2.50 per 400 grams. Okay, so what, what are grams? Because if you're like me, metric is, is always a big mental stumble, okay? So grams are, 400 grams is just shy a pound. 500 grams is just over a pound. So you need, I think, to, this is like 14.1 ounces, where 16 um, ounces, as you know, is a pound. And so that's what we're shy here. If I had an actual ounces, this would be closer to about $2.75. I always look at under $3 for a pound of meat to be an exceptional bargain. So I consider this mesquite to be an exceptional bargain. However, I do mix it with 100% beef. I have not been able to find, except at the Mercado, anything that's 75-25. So I've gone to 80-20 here, and that's what you do when you live foreign. You just get what you can that's as close to what you're looking for. And Sue Carne is the brand, guys. And this is 100% beef. This is way more expensive at 66 pesos for 400 grams, okay? So instantly I do the conversion 20 to one, which I shouldn't because we're like 17, 18 to one now, but it's an approximate. And so we're looking at about $3.33 USD. But in Mexico, it's very expensive. So what I do is a really good meal for me. Um, a lot of people ask me how much I eat. I'm changing that up, guys. I'm gonna talk about that after I talk about the meat in Muslim lawn, okay? Like one of these is enough for me, okay? 400 grams at 14.1 ounces, just shy a pound, is, a, is almost an OMAD for me. But I'm not doing that anymore. What I'm doing now is I'm, I'm eating the appetite and I'm getting rid of a lot of my cream too, but that's, that's to be discussed after this. So what Hubs does is he puts two of these together and this gives us about five patties. And he has three patties and then I have two. And what I do is I usually have the little bit bigger patties and he has the two big patties and a smaller patty. And so Hubs is actually getting a little bit less. I top those with cheese and that'll be another video. Um, I'm not a big cheese head. Hubs is a huge cheese head. I believe dairy stalls. Um, I've been following a couple girls for a long time uh, on YouTube. One is Steak and Butter Gal. The other one is Kelly Hogan. Uh, she's a longtime carnivore. Uh, Bella from Steak and Butter Gal has become a longer time carnivore. And there's a gal called Lisa, Lisa D1 or something. Anyway, I love her too. Um, all the girls look fantastic. They're exactly where I would like to be um, built, where I would like to shake out to be. Without exception, all three of them, if they do have coffee, they never have it with cream. I think what my main problem has been, if you wanna look at it as such, is that I just have entirely too much fat every day and I'm getting it in the form of cream. Let's talk about dairy a little bit. 
dairy, and I'm, I'm having some coffee now, guys. This, this cup cost 30 pesos, so it was like $1.50. It's almost like a soup, a soup cup, but it's not, guys. It actually was labeled as a teacup, you can imagine. I kind of like the cups that go like this, and they go in hard, and then they flare at the top. Anyway, I don't know why. That's not even important. <laughs> Anyways, circling back around. I think that's my main my main problem right now with my, my carnival way of eating, uh, is that I'm having entirely too much cream. So what I did today was that my first cup, I let Hubs make as he usually does, about three tablespoons of cream. He put a very small dollop on top because he agrees, feels like I'm having too much cream for a lot of different reasons. And then the second cup, I put in just enough so that the color wasn't entirely black. So I'm pulling back. So far, I'm not hungry. And it's, um, it's close to 10 o'clock right now. So that's fine. And what I'm doing now, and then the other girls I notice, like Steak and, and Butter Gal, she stays away from cheese. Kelly Hogan has an even simpler diet. She's almost Lion's Diet. Okay, what's Lion's Diet? Lion's Diet uh, was that term was coined by uh, Michaela Peterson, and then her, her father adopted it a couple years later after having witnessed um, the health miracles that she was, she was reaping the benefits of. And she just has ruminant meat, salt and water. And I'd go to that, guys, if I needed to. I wanna be alive. I don't wanna get rheumatoid arthritis. I've already got Hashimoto's. I've got all these autoimmune issues. And the more autoimmune issues you have, the more boxes of autoimmune um, challenge you can tick, the more, the more it is important that you go to a simpler way of eating. Uh, no dairy, you just, you just take everything out. The best I ever felt was when I just did beef patties and steak and bacon grease and black coffee. In fact, I had between 1,800 and 2,300 calories a day because I tracked it, okay? I tracked it. And for some reason, that worked out great for me. And I lost 4.8 pounds and I never one time was hungry. I never one time had any mental fatigue about decision-making, no mental decision-making fatigue. No decision fatigue. What am I gonna eat? How much am I gonna eat? Whatever, I just stopped when I was, I just felt full, kind of full, not stuffed, but full, and I stopped, and I was perfect. So I'm, I'm coming back around to that, but since I'm in Mazatlan, where seafood is most prevalent, I'm going to do more of a seafood-centric way of eating. So I'll be having more shrimp, I'll be having uh, more bacon, because that's the thing down here. Uh, pork and seafood are huge and chicken are huge here. Beef is at the lowest rung of what people eat. Um, I still like beef and Hubs gets me ribeye at the Mercado, which is an open market, supermarket, which I'll be showing you some footage of when we go there. They've got like the pig's heads and the whole bit. Yeah, I'm starting to get hot. I'm starting to get hot. I'm not gonna lie. It's uh, very humid here in late November. And, and so that's what I'm dealing with. And it's fine, I'd rather be hot than cold. But I think Hobbs has had it. I, I think next year it's gonna be, we're gonna come back down to Muzzle Lawn uh, post Thanksgiving, because I, I don't think he's digging it. So anyway, I'm cutting back on the cream. These are the meats. These are my go-to meats. And that means Hobbs and I can eat for about $6 a day if all we were gonna have were burgers. He does uh, bacon in the oven using a, a double cookie sheet method with parchment paper in between and then he pours the grease out into our little container so I can use it for my eggs when I get hungry. That's that's kind of what we're going to. So for instance, somebody invited us out to go to Poncho's on Wednesday for supper and I'll get the Imperial shrimp. And what those are is that they're, they're shrimp wrapped in bacon, huge shrimp guys, jumbo, they're like prawns, okay? Cause this is the shrimp capital of the world in Mazatlan, okay? So I'll get those wrapped in bacon and then there'll be some white melted cheese over the top, okay? And that's will be my supper. But I'll probably have some breakfast earlier. I'll probably have had, you know, four scrambled eggs or whatever earlier. My goal is to get rid of cream entirely. But I'm gonna ease into that because it kind of pisses me off. It was kind of my my one daily, not cheap, but like I looked forward to it. And but you know, my health's more important. And I wanna just touch on there very briefly. My eczema is almost gone, my psoriasis is terrible. All my joints hurt. Things that should be healing are not healing. Um, I've got a tendonitis, Achilles tendon problem in the back of my legs. I've got my knees flaring up and I've got like a little knob of something on top of my kneecap, you know, which tells me there's inflammatory stuff happening and 
all kinds of compromise and now my my nerve in my lower back is starting to bother me and this gal I follow Lisa I'll I'll link down my favorites and I'll tell you what I like and not don't like about them shortly what I like about her she's very transparent about all the physical malaise she was suffering from and she's kind of where I was at you know she wasn't grossly overweight or anything but she felt so terrible impacted with inflammation and joint pain and all that stuff. She didn't care what she did. She just hopped on the carnivore because she was hoping last resort, anything will work. And that's how everybody comes to carnivore, it seems. So I highly recommend if you're over 50 to watch her. She's really got her act together. She's she's quite a fashion maven. And, and on first blush, she comes across a little bit ditzy. She's not, she's a smart gal. She's very blonde, she's very pretty. She's got all the stuff. Um, if that doesn't trouble you, watch her and go to her playlist under carnivore and go way back to the beginning and just watch how how simple she was and how it all worked for her and even though she was having american cheese every day and a little bit of ketchup she was still able to heal her symptoms they went away even the sci sciatic nerve or whatever that's called back there that got better kelly hogan is extreme and she may be just a little bit um, i'm just sweating right now guys i just am she might be a little bit much for you guys with her eight burger patties from McDonald's and stuff. And that's no longer affordable. But when she started a decade ago, she was able to get um, a dollar a patty and she could feed herself for $8 a day. You can't do that now, guys. A lot of places in McDonald's, since her franchise, aren't even offering that a la carte option anymore. You're just screwed, right? So, but she's interesting to watch because she has a long precedent of having been carnivore. And she's, she's my height. Uh, well, she's a little shorter, not much, by 5'9". She weighs about 138 pounds. She's lean. And this gal, Lisa, is lean. She's 121 at 5'6". And then steak and butter gal, I don't know what she weighs now, but she runs in the 130s somewhere, and she's my exact height at 5'10". Now, she's built smaller than me. You'll see it. I mean, my, my shoulders are more broad and everything. I mean, she's just built a little bit smaller. But, you know, the 140s for me is a good spot. And so I'm like, as long as I don't have to starve and I feel satisfied, and I know that my health is in order. Whatever weight my body wants to come to and shake out at after six months or a year is where I should be. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. It doesn't matter exactly how I look. It's more about, okay, if I eat a species specific diet, where will I shake out to be? Now you guys know I'm gonna cheat on Christmas. You guys know I'm gonna cheat on our anniversary in late January. Accepting those two dates, I'm gonna stay clean. And I want you to join me. I want you to join me. Okay, the more overweight you are, the more latitude you have. So you don't probably have to be as strict. You can still have cream in your coffee. You can still douse stuff in cheese. I just don't feel like I can anymore, guys. I need to, I need to start feeling better. I don't like the way I'm feeling. And I'm certain it's because my body's gotten sensitized to toxins and plant. And anytime I have anything from any of that, um, I, I suffer for it. And I, I do have a little bit of tingling right now going on you know like if I if I'm on a chair and I go to get up and I put my hand down on the chair my my hand acts as though it's waking up from having been asleep and right now I can just feel a little bit of tingling on my pinky and my ring finger why that's new that's last week so lots of little things coming in guys lots of little things coming in I, I'm not loving it I want to, I want to be better I want to be well so join me in this journey and watch what it is I have to eat in Mazatlan. Think about moving to Mexico, guys. If, if, you, if you like change and you wanna live more simply and you wanna live more organically and more naturally and let your American dollar um, get you further with a little bit better lifestyle, this is where to go. If you like different cultures, if you wanna to learn to speak Spanish, if you like the ocean and you like you know, a warmer climate, this is also good for you. A remote worker, I highly, I highly recommend that you investigate living here instead of America all the time. Anyway, love you guys. Subscribe. Smash the like button. Love me.